Our next speaker is Stephen Schechter, Director of Government and Community Affairs of the Brooklyn Public Library. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the committee and the members of the council for uh, coming here to Brooklyn today. I'm here representing Brooklyn Public Library's Executive Director, Dion McHarvin, who couldn't join us today. Uh, I'm really going to talk up from the demand side and show what we see as Brooklyn Public Library, uh, the incredible demand for broadband uh, services in the borough, and how we try to meet that demand. Uh, we uh, recognize uh, the importance of our role as one of New York City's largest providers of free broadband access. And we know for many Brooklynites, we are the only place where they have access to a PC, uh, and certainly the only place that they have uh, broadband access to the internet. Uh, over the years, the library has made a significant investment in new technology. Uh, we've replaced all of our public access computers, uh, and in the, right now we're replacing all of our staff computers uh, because uh, given the video demand, the demand that video, that video on demand places on the network and all of the applications that we're running, uh, you know, we constantly have to upgrade that technology in addition to our, uh, our connection to the internet. Uh, in addition, we recently added uh, Wi-Fi capabilities at all of our libraries, so uh, we also probably operate the largest Wi-Fi network in the borough uh, as well. Uh, you know, we, uh, and I'll just give you some basic facts about uh, what we provide in Brooklyn, and uh, let, I'll let you know what we know uh, the people in Brooklyn are using our system for. Uh, right now, we have a network of 59 uh, branches, physical branches in the borough, uh, and a network of over 1,000 public PCs uh, that are available free of charge whenever the library is open. Uh, unfortunately, we have to ration that asset because frequently demand far outstrips the supply that we have to offer. We provide one half hour sessions to Brooklynites with a library card. We provide them with the ability to sign up for two one half hour sessions a day. Uh, and they can do that with their ABC Brooklyn Library card. Uh, last, the, in the last quarter, uh, we averaged 160,000 sessions a month on our public PCs. Uh, so we're on pace to offer almost 2 million public computer access sessions this year. Uh, and you know, we don't monitor our, our patrons' PC usage, but we know they're there for live online homework help, which requires a broadband connection because you're working with a tutor who may be working on a physics problem with you or a math problem with you, and they can demonstrate the problem on screen for you if you're working on that. We know our patrons come for job search. We know they come for access to our online catalog so they can see the books that we have to offer. They certainly are there for email. And for many teens uh, and adults, they use that broadband connection for access to, so access to social networking sites and a lot of people are there to play games online. Uh, I just want to end with an anecdote that I think really shows the, uh, you know, the incredible demand that uh, Brooklynites uh, have for this broadband access. We leave our Wi-Fi up and running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, it does bleed out of many of our buildings onto the street. Uh, often in the morning when I come to work at Central Library and certainly when I leave at night, there are people with their own devices, laptops, who are leaning up against our fence, grabbing that Wi-Fi signal because it's free, it's there, and while they may be able to afford a relatively expensive PC, I mean, I see people with relatively expensive PCs, they can't afford that $40 a month or $50 a month fee that uh, the paid providers are offering. So literally, people are hanging on the door to get the access that we provide. We're happy to offer that service. But I think from our perspective, we know that the demand in Brooklyn, uh, which is a community of immigrants and communities uh, of people that, uh, of poverty in many cases, uh, we're the only place that they have. And I know that they would love to have that access in other places. Thank you, Mr. Schechter. Any questions from the committee? Neil. Thank you. Um, I think we all uh, have not recognized enough how valuable the library system has been to broadband throughout the city. I think uh, Brooklyn's a, a marvelous example. Uh, 59 libraries, are they all have equal access broadband capability? They do. Now they do. They all have uh, the same 
connection to the internet. Uh, it's generally through Verizon as our service provider, but the mm -hmm. speed is the same. And I think we had some issues on our Wi-Fi, but that have all been, that's been settled as well. So every location has equal access in terms of uh, access to the internet. I, I do want to say, though, physical access to those buildings is not equal, however, because not all of our buildings are accessible to people with disabilities. Uh, so while you may be able to sit on the sidewalk and grab our Wi-Fi signal, you may not, if you're in a wheelchair or if you're a mother with a stroller, you may not be able to get into the entrance to our building. That's an infrastructure issue that we're dealing with, but it is, it is significant for some people who can't make it up our steps at some right. of our buildings. And, and does the library system employ a system engineer to, to keep the system running throughout the system? We do. We have a, an IT department uh, that manages that system. We work closely uh, you know, with Verizon. We also have some cooperative relationships with Doit uh, to keep that system up and running as well. Right. And has there been any thought to possibly using the libraries as points for WiMAX broadcasting at some point in the future? Uh, I, we, we were involved in some discussions with uh, neighborhood not-for-profits uh, who s wanted to work with us to broadcast our signal over a, a wider range. Those talks that I was in, that I knew of, never came to fruition. But. We know for a lot of neighborhood-based, not-for-profits, community-based organizations, they saw us, given that we're spread all through the borough, as a, as a potential source, and we're, you know, we're happy to give it away if, right. if we can yeah. get it out there. Thank you. Good to hear. <laughs> Other questions? Wendy. You talked about unmet demand, and we heard when we were in the Bronx uh, last month from uh, various students that they wanted to get access to PCs in the library, and they couldn't. And I'm wondering what you think uh, would help the most in expanding demand. Would it be getting more PCs? Is there space for that in the libraries? Would it be extending hours? What would you recommend? Right. Uh, we do face a physical limitation in many of our facilities uh, because they're small. They're certainly not designed you know, with technology in mind. Many of them are Carnegie libraries, 100 years old, you know, beautiful buildings, but uh, the space isn't there. Uh, certainly, adding hours of service would be an easy way to get more access to the computers we do have. We are looking at uh, laptop loaner programs where we would have laptops available and loan them to people so they could have access uh, through the building. We have some security concerns with that. Uh, I think New York Public Library is beginning a pilot in that area. Uh, but certainly uh, getting devices into people's hands who don't have uh, the resources to buy the device is one thing we're looking at. Uh, but also, you know, from a basic perspective, for every hour of service we add, that's another two sessions times a thousand, times a thousand public sessions that we could add uh, throughout the system. Other questions? 